Hello all, we're going to look at Azure Arc today. Now Azure Arc is something that we have not touched on because we don't usually go into these kind of services, but I figured it's something that is relevant for us because we want to talk about patching today. Now Azure Arc can also be used for other things and we will probably get onto those in a later video, but right now we're going to look at patching and specifically how this can be used for on-premise machines. So this can be done by going to the Azure Arc, going ahead and adding a machine, whereby you are presented with three options, a single, a multiple service, or adding from an update manager. So for the moment, we're gonna go ahead and do a single one because we're only going to have a single machine in this video. But if you're using multiple machines, then a service principle makes sense, or adding multiple machines via the update manager. And the update manager probably is a video all of its own. Now, regarding the adding a Azure machine, um, you will need to add them to a resource group. Since I don't have any resource groups here, I'm just gonna go ahead and freshly create one. And from that, you will then have a couple of options. So there are things such as the location, not particularly useful. Um, then you have the public or private access or the proxy access. Now this will depend a lot on your network. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the public because I don't have the proxy set. And I also don't have a private endpoint to connect to. This will depend on your network. Um, not every network is the same. So if you do require one of those for your network, remember to kind of select those options when going through here. Now this will not create or add the machine directly itself. But what it will do here is create the resource group, which will be completely empty. And it gives you a script, which you can then run. Now this script will vary based on your options. So if you'd selected the proxy option, then you'll have a slightly different version. Now I'm gonna go ahead to my VM here, which happens to be running locally, but it's not connected to anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch PowerShell and just run the script that I was given. Now it contains just a few basic commands, which is basically to download the agent um, and then the variable environment parameters necessary to which Azure instance to connect to, which in this case is my lab one. Um, and then once those steps are done, it's gonna go ahead and basically authenticate. Now the authentication, again, if you were using service principle, you would have those elements. Since we're using a single machine, it's gonna expect me to sign in. And when we get to that part, I'm gonna kind of just skip past the usual pop-up of where you get the enter your email address and password, or the multi-factor authentication, depending on how you have yours set up. So this process takes a little while. It's not massively complicated or slow per se, but um, it really does depend on the speed of your VM internet connection. And um, you know, it can take a couple of minutes, but this does give us ample time to talk about a few other things. One of them being, why would you want to do this? Well, Azure Arc, when you're using a single machine like this, doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. But when you're in the enterprise environments, patching three, 400 machines, Imagine this, you have your Azure Arc deployed and you have the ability to select all of the machines of a particular type or in a given resource group and patch them at once. So this is where part of the breakdown of how you assign the resources or how your machines are assigned to resource groups or subscriptions starts to determine how your patching structure might look. So. This is something to keep in mind. It does vary quite dramatically. Um, as there's more than one strategy to this, you could say, okay, I want all my dev machines sitting in a dev resource group, or, and all my prod ones in a prod resource group, or you could say I've got different subscriptions. Uh, so there's kind of different ways you can start to structure that, and that's not even counting some of the granularity that you can get into with dynamic selections and other kind of things that go in the background, which we will get to a little later on. So there's lots of options therefore available, and it's key to kind of have something in mind when you're going forward. So with a single machine, you're not gonna see a lot of that, but I just wanted to kind of explain that you should have a strategy or an idea behind it 
before you get started as that's something that's going to get very complicated further down the line to try and re-implement if you don't have a strategy already ahead of time. Now for most cases um, something very simple like just saying okay I have a resource group for dev machines might be simple enough. If you have a slightly more complex environment you might say okay well I have my dev machines but I have different resource groups for my devs. Maybe I have one that says okay I have a dev SQL and I have a dev IIS and a dev exchange etc etc. So that's the kind of thing where it will depend on your use case, your requirements and your personal needs but it is nice to kind of keep that in mind when you are going into this and have that correctly set up. Now with that in mind, um, hopefully our agent here is nearly done. Oh, and speaking of nearly done, it's done. So if we go back to Azure, we see that we have our resource group and if we open it, you can see I have my single server that we just registered there. Now there's a couple of important things. I can see the agent version, I can see the status, um, so I can see all the necessary parts tell me that it's alive, it's reporting in, etc. Um, nothing super important from that point of view, but there are a couple of things worth exploring. One of the which is that you can go to the run command section here, you can click on information, and that will actually take you to the Microsoft documentation where you can see a little bit more detail on how these things work. Now. To be fair, I think the documentation is still evolving, so keep that in mind. Um, you can also do things like you can connect to the VM itself you, through Azure Arc, and this is something that's kind of really useful. Um, but again, we won't really touch on that today. That's something to come back to at a later point. Now, the main thing we want to look at here is the whole security and security patches. Now, this can be done in multiple different ways. But for now, since we are not going to look at the Azure Defender, we're just going to look at the patching side of it, so the updates. Now, since we only just reported in or registered this machine, there's nothing really been done. There's no assessments, there's no maintenance, no scheduled tasks, etc. So what we're going to do is just go ahead basically and ask it to run an assessment. Um, and once that assessment is running, which we can now see here, we've got ahead we have an assessment running. Um, we can also look at schedules. So schedules is you can go ahead and schedule something. So we can schedule maintenance for server or servers based on some pre-existing conditions. And this again comes back to the how does your maintenance look. So we can say okay we want reboots, we want patches for these particular types, uh, maybe we don't want reboots, um, then we can then specify the time so we can have a schedule. Now, to be fair, I think the scheduling options here aren't perfect. Um, and this is something you maybe want to explore for yourself. I think that they're not as complex as they could be. Uh, they just offer times, days, weeks. Um, so you might need to create several different schedules. And then that's not a problem, you can create multiple schedules. So you may say, okay, as an example, let's say I've got a cluster and I've got two nodes in a cluster. I want to reboot the node on a, let's say, Saturday and the other node on the Sunday. Um, there's no way, way of scheduling that. So you're going to have to kind of dynamically pull the clusters apart. And again, maybe that goes back to resource groups or maybe it goes back to some naming convention where you say, okay, these will be fitting different days. But in this case, we have a single machine, so we're not worried. We're just going to add this one machine to our schedule and go ahead and create it just to demonstrate how this works. So in our case, that's not something to think about right now, but it's something that maybe in a slightly more complex environment, you need to dig into a bit more detail. Of. So that was simple enough. We, we went ahead and we created a maintenance configuration here with a schedule and it deploys. You see it basically becomes another config item in Azure. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, since we're not really in the mood to wait until the following week for the patching on this machine to kick in, uh, let's just go ahead and look at where we are now and see if our assessment is anywhere near finished. 
So we're just going to go and check on our VM. We should see that we had uh, an assessment running. Uh, we also can change a few other things here as well, by the way. You can also change the assessment if it happens uh, periodically. So you can enable the assessment so it happens automatically rather than needing to manually schedule it or click, you know, to run the assessment. Now, my one, as you can see, is still running. I have my schedule now set up and also configured. Um, so I'm just going to wait a little bit here because I need my assessment to finish before I can go on to the next part. And keep in mind that assessments obviously will depend primarily on the speed of your machine. And well, here, here we go. We have our assessments just finished here. And I can see that there is status. There we go. Just refresh and there we go we, we have an outstanding patch which is pretty much what I expected to see because I did patch this machine prior to the installation um, but this machine also has SQL and SQL patches are not included in the regular patches therefore there is an outstanding SQL patch so I'm going to do a run now one time customization and you can see here we have the default it's going to put the machine into maintenance it's going to cause a reboot if needed um, which won't be needed in this case but in case there was you can also change that and say never reboot or always reboot so again there are a few more options that you can play with now this is looking at it at a single vm obviously you could have things like also the the sql um, agent installed here by the way uh, that's again another video much more detail to come um, but if you wanted to look at it on scale and we talk about again, you know, two, three hundred machines, then you don't want to click through all two, three hundred machines. So there is another piece of software or another interface, if you will, in Azure, which is the update manager. So if we go back to the search and pull out the Azure update manager, what we can see here is when we go down to machines, we can see all of the machines that are configured with Azure Arc. You'll also see any Azure VMs if there were any here. So we can also group them by types, locations, meta tags. So we can kind of start to build the list. And here you'll see similar information. So we can see, okay, there's one with a patch, outstanding. And I can launch it from here one time, or I can apply schedules. Basically all the things that you could do with a single VM, but on scale. So you could do, you know, as an example, select the resource group. And if the resource group has 100 servers, you have all 100 selected and go patch now. That's something that is obviously a lot better than going to each server individually and saying, oh, I want to apply these patches. Uh, equally, you can do the same with the assessments on scale. Let's say you say, okay, well, I've got all of these servers. I've got maintenance coming in the next hour. Um, let's just see if there's anything pending for them. And you can do that assessment if it is not already automated in such a way that the assessment is running automatically. Now, those are all great functions and the ability to group them in so many different ways here. You can see that you can group by the update types, you can group by uh, subscription, you can group by resources, um, you can group by status. There's quite a number of ways, and this is still maybe not the best filter, and I would complain that I always like to look at it through um, the perspective of going through the resource groups, because the VMs themselves are not that important to me. Um, I'm just checking here that our patching is still in progress, because it's been a little while. And honestly, the default view just being the machines and no filtering kind of bugs me. I would prefer if it went to at least the resource group view, um, maybe the subscription, it kind of depends how, how you've got it set up, if you've got multiple subscriptions or single subscription. But anyway, um, as you can see now, our patching is actually finished. We have a nice green machine, patches were applied, and and that's that's how easy it is to actually patch a machine using Azure Arc. So we have installed and patched our server in just under 
15 or so minutes and and that that's what I wanted to show you today hopefully you found this useful and if you did you know what to do if not you also know what to do and see you in the next one